You're watching a clip from the club podcast. Make sure you follow it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and give it a five-star review. Welcome back to the club. This clip is brought to you by NordVPN. These guys have been backing us on the club. Uh, this has been a really incredible partnership to be working with the fastest VPN service uh, going. Uh, it's the service that I use. We're talking about flights to Ibiza in the summer where Man City win the Premier League. We're talking about those away days. When you're on holiday and you're trying to watch Netflix, you're trying to watch Match of the Day and try and get back to those streaming services, you can use a VPN, log in and go back and watch those services that you love from all points around the world. Uh, it's a beautiful service. And for the price of a cup of coffee, Look, cost of living crisis, those costs are going up, but NordVPN stays cheap, it stays affordable, you get six logins uh, for the price of one. For that, you get the fastest VPN on the internet by a country mile. Make sure you check it out, it's a 30 day money back guarantee as well, uh, so it's a win-win for everyone. Uh, make sure you check it out, nordvpn.com forward slash the club. Make sure you check it out, the link is in the description down below. The big one for me, Phil Foden. I mean, we're talking about a guy who's got like, 13 goals in the Premier League, I think he's got more in all comps. We're talking at least 15 goals a season kind of midfielder, 20 goals a season kind of midfielder, and he's still in his early 20s. I mean, we, he could be hundreds of, he could be finished up with hundreds of goals um, uh, <laughs> for Man City. Do you know what I mean? Hundreds and hundreds of, of goals. I mean, the way he ran through that Newcastle bat line yesterday was was crazy. It was scary. It was Paul Gascoigne. It was, it was Gaza. You're right. It was, like it was a Gaza. Of, it was a Gaza goal. A little bit early Wayne Rooney. Gaza, Gaza scored a goal for Lazio where he did that. Like, he, he didn't really do anything with the ball. And I think it's very interesting watching Foden's technique. You know, you know some players, when they go round players like, I don't know, Cristiano Ronaldo or Anthony at Manchester United, it's a trick. It's a step up. You can see why the player's been sold. Mohamed Salah today, at one point, he really did Martinez up. And if you watch Salah's movement, you can see what he's done. Yeah. He's, you know, tricked him. You know, with Foden, the way that he carried the ball into that box, obviously he's unstoppable because nobody stopped him. But... He didn't look like he did anything. He just moved oh, and accelerated at such a rapid way. He has had that the ball thing such... about him as well, yeah. where the ball might be bouncing off his shins and stuff. But he's but in he control gets, of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. He knows what's happening. Yeah. He's in control of it. Yeah. I, th I think in terms of all the English talents we've seen in 20, 30 years, he must be surely the closest since Michael Owen to be kind of on the trajectory to win a Ballon d'Or. I mean, he's got everything. He's got goals. You yeah. know, there are some technically gifted players. I think of David Silva. Didn't have the goal record. But, mm. but we're talking about Phil Foden. He gets goals. He gets assists. He can play left wing, false nine. He's played false nine in the Champions League semi-final. He's, right, he's played right wing. He so what's going on in there, Foden? Why hasn't he played for such a long have time? Since the World Cup? Everyone's going to win the Ballon d'Or. I think if there's an argument of any English talent to win a Ballon d'Or, for me... Yeah, I think if, if you're playing that game, if list. you're playing the game, what Englishman is most likely to win a Ballon d'Or? I think the answer is if we, probably... If we all agree Messi, okay, Messi, maybe this year. The reason I counter that is because, let's say Folden's playing with Haaland mm. and you win the Champions League. That's normally a good factor that someone from that team is going to win a Ballon d'Or. Mm. Haaland's probably going to get it before him. Yeah, yeah, but if we're just He's playing a game, like what a Englishman... You know what I mean? like, if they get, like, there's a, there's, there's a chance that wise, no Englishman yeah. wins it. But if the game is, name the Englishman that is most likely to win the Ballon d'Or next, I think the answer is Phil Foden, isn't it? I'm just going to throw one in there, boys. Bellingham. Bellingham. Rashford. <laughs> Bellingham. You don't win, you don't win Ballon d'Ors playing in the Europa season. League. Who's the last Europa League? We're not going to be in the Europa League next season. <laughs> You're in the Europa League right now. We're not going to be in the Europa well, League next this, season. The club is currently Funny covering that, you've never this won a season. Europa League? Huh? Yeah, yeah. You've never won a Europa yeah, League? Yeah, because we're not why in it. We're not in it because we're playing the Champions League. I think you have, by the way. You've, got, you, you've won the equivalent. You've won a Cup Winners' Cup. Cup Winners' which Cup. Is not, now the, which is now the... Yeah, in 1970, I think it was, yeah. But um, yeah, look, it is what it is. I, I'm just saying, uh, for me, Phil Foden, again, and this this goes back to the Premier League title debate because there's an argument Phil Foden is like the best player to play for Arsenal if he starts for Arsenal t t tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? If he went to Arsenal tomorrow, he'd be the best player at Arsenal by country mile. And there's a world where he doesn't even start every game for City. I mean, it's, it's ludicrous. Yeah, but this is, he this should is be interesting, Booty. This is the interesting thing. Where would thing. he start for Arsenal, by the way? He starts where Odegaard You don't plays. start over Odegaard at the moment. Yeah, he does. For me. He starts with Odegaard. Uh, uh, yeah, Foden starts uh, for Arsenal. Then. Xhaka left, but he left don't second start He's better than Odegaard, bro. He, I'm not. Let's just never go there in a million years. Uh, I don't he's know better than you. Odegaard at every Odegaard's aspect. Odegaard's very of the good, bro. I, I don't Odegaard think he's that is good. a top, no, top no, no. quality player. Foden, Foden bangs that into the top of the net. The one against Aston Villa that he's they're different scuffs. players, but as a number ten, Foden controls Odegaard the game better. I think he does. I'm not even trying to be too biased. Like he's actually better at every aspect of the game than Odegaard in terms of goals, assists, better finisher. He's not. He's achieved. He's actually oh, achieved I like things. Foden. I'm a huge fan of Phil Foden's, by the way. I've always said it. I'd love him to be at Man United. But <sighs> you don't get in over Odegaard. Maybe next to him, off the left. And he starts ahead of Odegaard. That's just my... He starts ahead of Odegaard. It doesn't matter anyway. They're both excellent players. Um, they are... They're, you know, they're both having excellent seasons. The question I think is interesting about Foden. If he's so good, Booth, and I agree with you that he is, 
Why did Guardiola not really use him post World Cup until fairly recently? I think he had a little bit of a lack of form, a lack of confidence. It was it was easy to have a lack of confidence based on Gareth Southgate's management of him. Didn't start the first game for, for England. That was Mason Mount instead, and that was a terrible decision. And that that was changed. But he comes in midway through a campaign. England would pour that that World Cup. And and the big thing for me and and. He's being played at all sorts of different positions. We want to see a run where, look at Marcus Rashford. He's, he's, he's flourishing because he's being played in a similar position week in, week out. He's being trusted to do a certain job. He comes through and does it after trust has been instilled in him. Phil Foden is not being trusted to play in the position that he believes he should be playing in. And how can you be a better right winger than a left winger, than a false nine, than a right winger? Played right wing against Newcastle, played left wing the week before that. Is do that going mean? to hinder him? Yeah, of course it is. But it's a bit like the Wayne Rooney debate. He was being asked to play everywhere because he's so naturally gifted at football. But eventually there will have to be a debate. Maybe it's Ilkay Gundogan leaves and he starts playing in midfield instead of Ilkay Gundogan if he, if he was to leave in the summer. But right now, all I'm saying is Phil Foden's got the ability to drive us towards a Premier League campaign. He's so do you think you win the league this year? I still think we'll win the league this year. Yeah. Where will it be won? So you think you beat them, obviously. I think they'll drop points against Liverpool. They've got Newcastle away. Newcastle is shocking at the moment. But that kind of... Up, th- there will be a happened bounce. Happened to them last year at St. James's, didn't it? There'll be, there'll be a bounce for Newcastle because they're poor at the moment. So you're hoping that bounce happens later in the season where they're back to where they their form. Uh, they've got a couple of... they got If Bournemouth... Look, Bournemouth, for me, opened them up too easy at a couple of points. Uh, there's a lot of space in the midfield. If that's happening that early at home against Bournemouth... All I'm saying is if I had to put money on it, I think Arsenal have been fantastic. They've been better than us. They look better on the eye than us. There's no question about it. But again... So do you definitely beat them? I think that's... I think we beat them at the Etihad. We beat them at the Etihad. Do you know what you're doing though here? You're kind of implying constantly that you win the league without talking about that fixture. Are you that confident that you beat them when you play them? If we play them tomorrow... On my life, I'm so sh- I'm so certain we beat him three 0 tomorrow. You did this on the overlap, and Gary Neville said, yeah. <laughs> "You're just here to wind people up." <laughs> and, and, but I, I base that on the I fact that we've got the Emirates coming into form. Pass the Emirates. Put I do think Phil Folden coming into form, Bernardo Silva, Jack Grealish. That does make me think. <sighs> City are going to be hard. Quality, to too much quality. It's gonna be, it's gonna and be what is? Do you think Phil Foden starts now every game between now and the end of the season? Is he is he back in? Because Guardiola dropped him before. Do you, you think are, he's back? You, but you ask a City fan, like a normal a normal football fan that likes four four two and likes steak and chips. Do you know what I mean? Like a normal football. <laughs> no, but I, I'm I'm that guy. I'm that guy. I wanted I wanted Fernandinho in the Champions League final in the biggest game in our club's history against Chelsea. You, you, you know, we've already done it. So play a defensive midfielder and he didn't do that. So there's this disparity between what is real with Guardiola and he's trying different things. He played a back three with Riku Lewis, Ake. It's all weird. Mm. Bernardo Silva was played out of position recently as well. Yeah, as an inverted kind of, he's playing the Zinchenko role from last season. It's surreal, but it's, we're still there. We're still, we're still in, we could win a treble this season. I'm not mm. saying we will, of course not. The but thing is though, we you said, and I just want to wrap this bit up. You said Phil Foden could win a Ballon d'Or. Yeah. When we look at players that are Ballon d'Ors, now, maybe don't have one yet, but we'll get one. Mbappe. Yeah, Mbappe Arlen, will win Mbappe, a Ballon d'Or. Haaland will win a Ballon d'Or. Is I think Foden, he's in the discussion yeah. below those two. Do you think, I think do you, you've taken... I think it's quite interesting that you've taken umbrage a bit here. Do you? Because that to me doesn't sound Foden, that wild. I just don't think he can do it. You just don't think there's a Ballon d'Or in his future at all? Like, it wouldn't surprise yeah. me because I think he's got unreal talent. But you would have said this about a lot of players. I think a lot of people would have went, oh, Gerard wins a Ballon d'Or, so oh, Rooney wins a Ballon d'Or. And it doesn't always no, no, of course, go that of way. Course do you know not. what I mean? But, but, and I think sometimes it comes down to what position you play. I know mm. in our Gerard time, nearly did, but won. Frank Lampard finished ahead of him in the running. Like Beckham won the treble, yeah? And he still finished second to Rivaldo. Yeah, yeah. And we knocked mm. Rivaldo out of the Champions League. Mm. Like Maybe the Ballon d'Or is an antiquated measure of, 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 of quality. Maybe the club needs to come up with their own award system. Yep. And I say Phil Foden's the best player in the world at the moment. Yeah, you're wrong though. Okay. That was, I thought you were going to back me on that one. 